Okay, so today we're going to continue our endeavor on figuring out what we need to do to get this construction project done. Again, it's uh, broken into two parts, so this comprises the third and fourth projects this semester. There is a homework posted, which is just simply parsing a file and printing out a simple report. Uh, the code you can't directly take from the homework to the project, but it's essentially the same code where you have to open and parse a file. Yeah, and then I guess print a report. So doing the homework actually helps tremendously in completing the project. Uh, I have that homework due Thursday at midnight, so that gives both labs this week dedicated to working on the homework. Um, before I get going, does anyone have any questions for me? Okay. Then we shall go forward. Uh, let me see. Does anyone remember what Mondays are now, from now through the end of the semester? Television show on Todd's desktop day, Monday. I, I, don't have, I don't know how to roll it off the tongue right. All right, on the count of three. One, two, three. Star Trek. All right, a little Star Trek happiness for you. The original series. There he is in one of his happier moments. Is that from Khan? Huh? Is that from uh, One Watch with Khan? No, this, that, this episode is... Uh, I don't remember what this episode's called. I want to say mirror, mirror, but I'm not sure that's right. It's when the something goes haywire with the transporter, and it, it beams two of them. One of them's oh. a, a kind of nice, but doesn't have any leadership prowess, and he's all emotion. And, and uh, I'm Captain Kirk, is what he's saying right there. Anyway. So, actually, I don't need to go in here immediately because I'm going to get you in your groups. Uh, I want you to take a short period of time. I'm going to say five to eight minutes getting together in a group and, and see, telling me what you think uh, the various classes and their connections are. Uh, not, so I'm not necessarily looking for you to start sequence diagramming. I'll save that for phase two of today. Uh, but for a start, I'd like you all to, in groups, come up with your idea of what you think the various classes are that we're going to need, and then we'll, we'll diagram the relationship between the classes and then move on to uh, how things sequence together. All right, so with that, preamble, just self-assemble into uh, pods. Did you watch Yeah, I didn't care much for Dukes of Hazard, but it's it's cheesy enough that it, it merits a throw up on the desktop. We'll we'll have to see how many weeks I have left here. This is week twelve, so I have four weeks left before finals. <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about this a little bit. What I'll do is So we're all agreed that there's going to be an employee class, I assume. And what else do you think? Any other thoughts? 
clearance grade exception. Uh, yeah, those are certainly things worth talking about. Uh, the decision. So, what we ultimately need to figure out is th if the grade or the exception uh, meets the requirements or, or meets the what do I want to say the minimal requirements in order to constitute a class. So, from our perspective as object-oriented designers when we're solving the problem in this way, uh, we are deciding that a class is bundling together data with the <coughs> behaviors or actions that are performed on that data. Yes? So the night uh, is comprised of, of a number of different attributes. It doesn't have to be that way, by the way. It could just be a single attribute, for instance, in the first project, web counter. That was just a single attribute, a single piece of data, which was the current count. Uh, and, and there were four functions that basically were wrapped into that capsule. So uh, looking at these, we can definitely imagine the employee's name and their ID and, and so forth. Uh, there being functionality bundled with that information. And the same with equipment. So now asking the same of the... Um, the exception. Uh, the question is, is the exception more an attribute of something else or is it something that would have functionality that would merit putting it in the same capsule? Now let me pause and say we will answer that question right now, but when you're actually performing an object-oriented analysis and design, these questions aren't so easily answered right now what you generally have to do is you have to begin an iterative process so now you're gonna to go to the sequence diagram you're gonna say oh maybe it's a class I'll use a box for that and I'll put a, a box in a line down in a sequence diagram and we'll see if that works out and if it looks like it works out and you're interacting with that in our case that exception uh, you, you know have different questions for it and so forth then yes absolutely that's bundled into a class uh, Otherwise, you may find out otherwise. You come back to the object diagram, you tweak it a little bit, or the class diagram, I guess I should say. Work with it a little bit, go back to the sequence diagram, try it a different way, right? It's an iterative process. So, one, given the simplicity of this, and two, that I'm forcing your hand, I'm not making it very iterative. I just want to, I want you to understand how the process really works. Uh, so, uh, the, the question then is, is the exception really something that stands on its own, or would it be an attribute of some other class? And when it comes down to it, I can't think of a lot of things you would do with an exception. You could say, please give me yourself, and please set yourself to this, kind of like the get and set for the web counter. But beyond that, uh, I don't know that the exception w really stands on its own. So I'd be more inclined to make it an attribute of, what would it be an attribute of? Employee. Employee, Employee. right. Uh, <clears throat> but one thing you'll, you'll correctly point out is that an employee can have more than one exception, right? So it isn't a matter of, like, Knight having an integer for stamina or an integer for... Um, what am I thinking? I guess I'm thinking of weapon. It's more than just ha simply having an integer for stamina required and an integer for the hit chance. Uh, this one, you can't know how many exceptions the employee has until this program's actually running. And so what this prompts you to do is it prompts you to create something that would look like this, not like that. Like... <laughs> what I might do is this. And this would be a container from the standard template library. Uh, what should I do? Maybe I'll do something like this. Right, like there's a bunch of them. Okay. 
So what I would actually put here is the name of the container. Now one container that we're familiar with, I'll write it since we're familiar with it, is vector. So possibly this is a vector. We don't know. It's some sort of container. And then what I would do, sometimes you actually do the diagram this way. Again, I'm not being real formal about the diagram. So they, have, they, have, they literally have books on how to draw these damn diagrams the right way. Okay, don't bother reading the books. That's for the project manager to do. Um, so what would you call this? So you'd say that the employee has, what, exceptions? I'll leave it as singular. Uh, I would call this the exception vector. Now the question is, should this be a vector or not? And here's where going back and forth with that sequence diagram helps, but uh, can you come up with a scenario of where you need to look in this container? What is the situation where you need to look in this container? At what point in time do you need to look in the exception container? When you're assigning tools to employees, yes? So uh, now you put yourself in the employee's shoes. I get up here and I bring out the hard hats and so forth and we do the talking back and forth. Um, at some point the employee is going to have a piece of equipment and needs to know whether or not that employee can keep it. And setting aside the whole rank bit, uh, the employee may need to look at the exceptions. Now, if it was a vector, how would you go about finding out if a particular piece of equipment was in this vector? the equipment ID was in the exception vector. You create like a for loop, right? You create a for loop, you say is the first item in this vector, the ID of the piece of equipment is the second item in this vector, the ID of this equipment, right? You'd have to look at every single one, okay? Uh, that actually is not tremendously efficient. And so the actual standard template library container that we want is a set. So without going to, into how set is organized internally, it can much more efficiently search through a bunch of items rather than starting with the first one and going all the way to the last one. What also makes it really convenient is that uh, it's basically a, a one-off command to find out whether you have something inside of the set. In fact, let me, uh, so that I stay consistent with the way I've been doing this. Uh, it's, it's just a find function. So you would say exception dot, so what should I do here? I'll just write use sets find member function. And I won't write to find the exception. <clears throat> and it will very fish efficiently look through that set. Uh, the next thing we have is the equipment. Is there a relationship between the equipment and the employee? Yes, there is a relationship. And we would, uh, uh, actually, maybe I'll just move this over. There we go, we'll do that. And again, we have something similar to what we had with uh, the exceptions, which is an employee can have one or more p pieces of equipment, yes? Okay. I guess what I might do is I might come here and... Uh,
Here I'm trying to show that this set is full of integers. Okay. Uh, for this, I think it's fine to go ahead and use a vector. So again, the employee, I'm going to draw it out here. I'll do my proper little, doesn't count if you don't make the whistling sound. And I should also show the direction of the relationship. The direction of the relationship is very important uh, because the thing being pointed to, that is the thing that the arrowhead is touching, has no idea of the existence of the other end of the arrow, meaning that the employee definitely is able to interact with the set because it knows that it can interact uh, with the set through this variable exception, but it doesn't go both ways. There's nothing in sets code anywhere that would allow it to talk to employee. And that makes sense from a standard template library because the set class was written years ago. They had no idea we'd be doing this project, right? Okay, and what this would be then is, I'll stick to my handwriting. This would be a vector. And I'll show that it's a container by doing this. Let's do it like that. And then what we what should we name this vector? How about workers? Worker or workers. It doesn't matter whether you make it plural. And then we go ahead and we just draw a line. Now we do this. Uh, I'm going to do it. Okay, whereas this is a set of integers, this is a vector of equipment. Yes? Oh, I'm sorry. I got this backward. That isn't worker. That would be stuff. Tools, thank you. So why wouldn't we use a set? Uh, why wouldn't you use a set? It's a uh, because you prob because you need to when you look at the report, you have to print out each employee and their equipment, right? And although it's not specifically said, uh, there intrinsically and there is an assumption that you're able to sort that report and the sub parts of the report. So um, definitely the employees on that report are sorted by rank, right? You have the lower ranks at the top of the report and the higher ranks lower down. There isn't any specific sorting requirement for the equipment, but it's, it's within the realm of reason that you might want to sort the equipment by rank re, uh, required or by location in the depot or any number of characteristics. Uh, if I had a construction company, I would require all of my reports to sort equipment lists by color. Okay, so there's some sort of uh, uh, sorting in, in a vector already. Right. So the difference between the difference between one of the differences between a set and a vector is a vector has a known order. A vector under the hood, a vector actually is just an array, right? And you're able to index into those. And vector supports that kind of uh, semantic, being able to index with the square braces and so forth. Uh, a set does not have a sense of order. You're able to iterate through them. You could look through them one at a time, but you have no control over the order that you're going to receive those items. It's just pulling them out of a bag. Okay. Any other questions? Yes? Uh, there is no difference between tool and equipment, except to say the way I've drawn it here, a tool is a vector of equipment. So let's look at let's look at an example that we're more familiar with. We didn't realize the program this way, but um, 
the, what if the way the joust was done was that a knight could have as many weapons as you wanted? So what you'd do is you'd create a class for the knight, and then you would say that this would be weapon in golf bag, right? They'd have a whole bunch of them. And that would be, this would be a vector of weapons. Okay, so that, that's uh, what we're, we're emulating here with, with this relationship with tool, vector, and equipment. So a knight can have a whole bunch of weapons in a vector. This vector is private data of knight called weapon and golf bag. Uh, here, an employee can have a whole bunch of equipment. The way we do that is that we call it tool, and the tool is a vector of equipment. Any other questions? <coughs> So let's talk about doing the sequence diagramming for this. We would call this construction object diagram. Oh, there's one other thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, blast. All right, hang on. Uh, the question was, any other classes? I think employee and equipment come out as being easy grabs, but... There actually, I would uh, say that there would be one more class. And the reason is that when we look at the requirements here from the users, they say something about, about, I'm not finding it at a scan. Um, I thought that somewhere in here was the tie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's here where they, they, on the last page, where they show what the report should look like. Uh, so they say a sample of the report we need is attached. Please note that this is just our most pressing need. There are a number of reports and statistics that we'll need to generate from this data inventory reports, equipment allocation over time, employees by rank, etc. Of course, those can write, right now we need this report, okay? So, note that we have something very different from what we had in the Joust project. In the Joust project, we just wanted to create some uh, classes because those would be utilized in the future and in the game when they write the game, but they weren't writing the game at that point. They just needed to test some numbers. So what we did is we created a main, which was going to be a throwaway main, Right, so there's actually there's a fair amount of code that you had in main. You had to ask all those questions. You had to create the knights. You had to have the loop, and uh, ask each knight to display themselves at the either the beginning of the round or the end of the round. Uh, so there's a fair amount of code there, and that all got thrown away because that game mechanic was going to be figured out down the road, and it was just to, for them to test numbers. Not the same thing here. Here they don't need any test. They need an actual running application. And given that they need uh, so many reports done and so forth, it, it makes sense that when we read in the employees and the equipment and the exceptions and so forth from the file, we want that to persist across function calls, right? So again, this is one of the criteria for determining um, whether data should be part of a class or whether it should be a local variable. When we're dealing with the random number generator, for uh, when we found out if a weapon hit or not, we were able to create that as a local variable because it, that random number generator did not need to persist
throughout the lifetime of the weapon. We just needed it right at that moment. Give me a random number. I'm done with you, right? Same idea if you create a for loop somewhere and you say for int i equals zero, that i, is there any reason for you to know what that i is across function calls? No, it's just a little local variable you're using for that moment and you're done with it. Okay, the, the employees that we're reading from the file and the equipment that we're reading from the file, that stuff we need to keep preserved across different reports and different statistics are going to generate and so forth. So what I imagine is something, some sort of class where for data I'm going to have employees and I'm going to have equipment and then there are going to be a number of functions here uh, for generating the reports. So you're going to generate report, whoops, what am I doing? That's something goofy. Uh, so you, you've got, you know, the assignment report is what you all need to do. And then down the road, they're going to be adding a whole bunch of other member functions to manipulate this data down here. Okay, does everyone see the rationale behind making this a class? Yes. Uh, so the difference between this and Joust is uh, we're getting a list of employees that won't that will always be the same. No, they won't always be the same. But uh, so th I have to step back. This is only a partial implementation of an application. If it's a full application, you'd be able to write out the file at the end of the day and add employees through an interface and stuff like that, right? Uh, what's happening is they have a mainframe system with all this. Uh, legacy data and nightly that mainframe system is creating the employee files and so forth so what would happen is when they come in in the morning they would turn on their machine they would start this application then it would run all day long where in the office they're generating reports and stuff and at the end of the day they shut it down that night the mainframe is putting out a new file in case more equipment has been bought or employees have been hired or fired and things of that nature so would it be similar if you had like a round class Uh, yeah, it, like a round class. Uh, yeah, I, I think I would I would put it more at the level of joust, a joust class rather than a round class, since there are many rounds in a single joust. Mm -hmm. But if I if you had been tasked with creating the finished game, then yes, it would make a lot more sense to have a class bundling those knights, and so those knights would be private data because maybe they would you would maybe there it'd be more complex, and the knights would have attributes where like they gain experience after each joust or something like that. Uh, for for this class I'm proposing here, mm -hmm. no. So this the way this class. Let me actually get rid of my chicken scratch here. Whoops, and that's all it's going to get. So what this class would be. is I'm going to, let me see, what do I have? Good, that'll work. Uh, I didn't give myself enough space, did I? Um, hmm, all right. This stuff's got to go. Oops. Why doesn't that work? That should work. Okay. Oops. Which time? So this class, uh, I would give it the name since all these employees are reporting to a depot. I think I'd call this a depot. So this would be a depot. 
And then I would go ahead, I, I have to create relationships similar to what I have going here. <clears throat> and how would I do it? I think, um, I'd create two of these. I'd have one called workers. Oh, I did my, I did it all wrong, didn't I? It goes like this. Right. Workers, and there's going to be something else here. What else would, so this is going to go, I'm going to write fast because I'm nearly out of time. This would be a vector. And this vector has a relationship with employees, right? So the depot has a vector of work of employees in a variable called workers. Workers is a, an employee vector. And the other <coughs> what about here? Why did I do that? Why did I play my hand a little soon? The equipment of the day, um equipment of the day. Mm, yeah, you're on the right track. Right, the, the equipment that has not been assigned, right? Remember, there's probably going to be some equipment left over after all the employees are assigned equipment. So this would be unassigned, or whatever you want to call it. In the report, it reads as unassigned equipment, so that'll... And then I have to do... Then I do the same kind of thing. This becomes a vector... And that vector, it's the unassigned equipment. The unassigned is a vector of equipment. Yes? Yes? All equipment is unassigned and teleassigned, right? That's a good question. All the equipment is unassigned until you assign it. So there are a couple ways of doing it. Let's. The, there's basically going to be two main sequences that we need to figure out. The first is, I would say, when you create, the, when you start up the application. When you start up the application, you're going to create a depot object, okay? The depot object is what has to sort out the workers and unassigned. So the depot constructor is going to have all the initialization. It's going to open up files. It's basically going to flesh out this entire structure that you see here. Um, now, how you, whether you open up the equipment and put it all in unassigned and then try to um, marry it up with the workers after, or another alternative is as you're reading in the equipment, you can assign it to workers, and then any leftover you put in unassigned. So there are a couple ways of doing that. Uh, so there's two main functions, if you will, we have to figure out. The depot constructor, when it starts up, it does a lot of file reading and, and creating of these uh, structures I've drawn out here. The second is the actual generation of the assignment report. Okay. So on Wednesday, that is what I want to be spending the period doing, is figuring out what those two sequences are doing. So if you wanted, other than doing the homework, the one thing you want to think about is what is the sequence of events for depots constructor and for the assignment report. Is what? Secret word. Yeah, secret word. Uh, I do not have the secret word quiz up yet. I will walk to my office and have it up within in under ten minutes. That was last, this is Monday, April 14th, 2014. Um, one, this is the one that's closest to my heart, is the Tron video game. Every, every kid of my era chose a game to be master of, and I was master of Tron. I could turn that beast over. <laughs>
Yeah, it, it had four sub games in it. Bike Spiders, the Cone thing, and um, oh, Tanks was the fourth one. It was a kind of a Pac-Man type maze with the tanks. And the interesting thing, though, is with uh, of course they were working on that game before the movie came out, and the part of the movie that had spiders was left on the cutting room floor. So it's in the game, but not in the movie. No. Uh, the code that was going by. Oh, cone, cone, C O N E. Oh, okay. it, it was. Um, it, it it had this it had this kind of multicolored cone up here, and you sat down here, and and it would slowly force you. Yeah, and you had to you had to shoot this, and you had to basic, and it was rotating. Right, it was rotating this way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, that's a pretty good memory. Yeah. <laughs> I love that movie. 